Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to the castle. So, as you can see, we're going to work on uh, a little shack to go uh, around the radio tower here today. Let's start off the courtyard. So, the plan, as you can see, is to sort of build an observation platform and a bit more of a structure to this place. So, start off by extending the existing floor. One of the hardest parts about this, really, was that, uh, apart from snapping the stairs in here, that uh, it's quite difficult to get the upper floor and the lower floor lined up. That was one problem we had right there. So, uh, once I've got this snapped in, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the length of the staircase, which we just want to do with this angle, and the way it snaps on there, apparently, for the look of that, meant that uh, the upper level wasn't lining up properly. So, we'll have a look at what I've, my initial attempt in a moment, but the part that worked was to snap the shack upper floor onto a wall and use that as a starting point. So you see it's the right height here. It's just the uh, alignment that was an issue. There we go, we'll snap that onto the shack upper floor, move along this side. You'll see just in a moment where there was actually a bit of a, quite a large gap between these floor pieces and, there you go, you can see the one at the top there sticking out. Sort of sticking out beyond the end of the roof, whereas they're now in the right place, which is the issue we had. So, we will just pull these upper floors out and adjust the uh, remaining small ones so that they uh, snap into the right position. There we go, neat and tidy. You can see the problem a little bit here. With the uh, stairs now snap to the upper floor with it in the right place, it doesn't snap to the lower level for some reason. Still not 100% what that reason might be actually looking at this, but it was awkward. However, the solution We've got this floor piece put in. And then we're going to snap it to the upper floor again. Like that. There we go. It's clipping through the middle of the floor there, so we've got a nice smooth uh, path up. So we'll pull out these walls we're using as a guide. And we have our uh, the beginnings of our structure anyway. Now the problem with doing it this way, of course, is that... Um, because I'm not keeping the shack upper floors in, the floors are actually a little too high to use shack walls, so we'll have to uh, group select some walls in rather than just snap them in. Well, that's fine. Starting with a doorway here. I decided to put this off-centre, partly because the chair for the radio tower would actually be dead centre otherwise, so I didn't want that right in front of the door. And it just gives it a, a little bit more character being off-centre. And a little bit easier access to the stairs as well. Okay, so stick the floor in around this side. And the one other problem we had with the floors is these two here, as you can see, just won't go in. So there's various options I could have done, probably, to make something work, but uh, I decided to leave it as is in the end. The whole thing's fairly ramshackle anyway, it doesn't really matter if there's a bit of earth showing. I could probably have group selected something in, or possibly rug glitch and something along those lines. But, I kind of like the finished product, so. Unfortunately, this chap decided he wanted to stand right where I wanted to place the wall, so it made life slightly more awkward until I told him to move. There we go, first wall in. And we'll carry on. So dead simple on these, just grab them with a concrete pillar for group select, line them up with the upper level, Slide them across so they meet on the corners, and there we go. So mixing and matching a bit here, I'm using uh, barn and warehouse pieces for the main part. On the other hand, as you see, the thing's looking rather boxy at the moment, so that simply will not do. So, here's our alternative. Using these curved uh, metal walls can be a bit of a pain sometimes. Obviously they don't quite match up there, but eh, it's fine. It's supposed to look like an improvised structure. And you can ignore that orange one, it looks so awful I took it out. Again, snap these in, but as we can see, they don't meet the ceiling. But we will correct that momentarily. We have the bare bones of the structure there now. So, pulling that monstrosity out, we'll put this uh, shack wall end in. These things have relatively forgiving collision, and because they don't snap, the easiest way of doing them with them is just to stick them on a rug, and glitch them into place. There we go. 
one of the the better additions to USO, which is saying a lot to be fair. There's a lot of good stuff in that mod. That uh, solves a very specific problem that was not addressed in the base game, which is very handy. So, for this other corner, we're going to need a little more height than these half walls have, so just group select the two together. Dead easy to do, they're very, very forgiving about that. And just slide it into place, nice and easy. Sweet. So yeah, I've seen a lot of different uh, styles of builds on the castle. And with this one I'm going for a bit of a, a mix and match. It's, uh, I suppose, if we're looking for a timeline on it, it'll probably be uh, not too terribly long after the fall of the Institute, something like that. The, you know, the Minutemen haven't been here that long, but they've been here long enough to get established. And I've used the remaining stone knocking around to plug up one section of the wall, but uh, obviously ran out before they got to the other one. There we go, that's the gap sealed up, and we'll bang some railings on. So, yeah, I'm going to try and mix a few things up a bit. I've got a couple of ideas for courtyard and for a couple of other bits and pieces as well. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do on top of the walls yet. So, as a result of group selecting the walls in, a number of the sides, this one in particular, the railings wouldn't snap to. So, this half shack wall, which is uh, stretching the term, I think, a little bit there, really, but anyway. Makes a decent railing. First one went in, no problem, no group selected needed. Just slide that one in. This one's a little bit more fussy. Actually, I think it does snap to things. That might have something to do with it. So, grab the ashtray so it's nice and level on the bottom, and then just slide it straight in. So with this one, it's under the main walls tab on USO. There's a few of these weird sort of three-quarter walls in there. And this one, given the gaps on it, isn't really a great deal of use on its own, but it does make a good railing. This, as you can see, we've got the crossbar there, but it's not exactly sealed. And the idea isn't so much to have a guard post up here as to have sort of an observation platform. Although if anybody does uh, break through the front defences, it is a convenient firing position. The idea will be to turn the courtyard rather into more of a training area, so that's what I'm going to go for. With this uh, junk wall, we've got it reversed. Stealing an idea there a little bit from no respawns, but the thing's a little flat at the moment. I'm actually going to swap this out in a moment and uh, use the flat topped uh, equivalent to the same one. It's another USO added one. It's a little bit smaller than the full size ones and doesn't have quite so much in the way of uh, three dimensions, I suppose. But it doesn't have tyres sticking out of it and things like that, so they sit a little more snugly up against walls. There we go. The rest of them are fine with the uh, post sticking up, but that first one, it looks a little more supportive when we pull it out and replace it with a, a flat topped one. Unfortunately, the legs on those aren't quite as sturdy, so swings and roundabouts, but a little bit of dressing added. The thing has got a, a bit more life to it. One more under the window. This one was actually slightly more awkward than in the others, just because for some reason I had a hard time lining it up with the wall. I posted it in the first time and it was uh, sticking well away from the wall at one end. Choice of perspective and fallout, I guess. <laughs> so, on to Toys Out of the Prams, Pillars and Supports mod. And these are, well, as you see, plywood pieces with a few bits attached. Make good uh, alternatives for plugging gaps up, that sort of thing. If you want to use something a little bit different to the basics. And we otherwise have quite a limited supply of uh, vertical pieces other than the, you know, the walls and the couple of half walls. So the collision issue we're having here is actually the junk wall there. So we've only group selected them in, it's nice and easy just to pull it out. There we go. And um, just place it in. And then it will go back no problem in a moment. So these aren't really uh, intended to be railings because they're just above the stairs, but it just felt a little exposed as, as uh, you walked up the stairs. So. It completes the thing a little bit, and it's different to the railings we had used in the past. Which I think wouldn't snap anyway, because there's no floor there, but... I like to mix things up a little bit. So, two pillars there, just because it's a little too high for the one. Just line that up. Needs to be a little bit higher so that the window isn't completely blocked off. It is actually a little bit blocked off by the uh, 
addition to the top of the wall there on the right. Here we go. Completes the ramshackle look a little more. So, one last thing to uh, complete the look of the place. Raider tents were a bit of an odd choice, in a sense I'd rather have had it looking a little less raidery. But options are a bit limited, so it is what it is. So I wanted something up here that would provide a bit of shade for anybody up on the top level. These didn't need any fancy tricks or anything to get them in, they just dropped in just fine. You just need to uh, make sure you're standing far enough back really, and uh, play with it until it wants to cooperate. The one major issue, of course, if you have a look at the bottom of the legs there, you can see they're actually floating, which we'll uh, address in a moment. For now, I'm not quite happy with the way these two tents line up. I want to uh, adjust them so they cover as much of the walkway as possible, and look uh, as synced up as possible. It's lined up. So, little thing there to be aware of. You have to grab the correct legs, usually the uh, two together rather than the tall one on its own at the other end. Make sure you're standing far enough back to see pretty much the whole tent, otherwise it'll just go red and won't play ball. So there we go, line those up a little bit better. If you're using group select, you could probably pull them down a little lower, but we need some uh, clearance at the top anyway, so there we go. Uh, trusty cinder blocks just to hide the fact that they're floating. It's nowhere near tall enough. So just grab that. Uh, was it? No, no, it's not tall enough. So grab the second one, drop that on the top. Decided to uh, mix things up a little bit and put a different angle on this one, just so that it wasn't the same old thing. Most of the others I couldn't do this with, so I had to keep it fairly simple, but that looks a little different, so, you know, little details. Okay, this one needed to be a little taller again, so I've just used one of the prefab stacks. Uh, group select that in. And another two. Again, we're very close to the junk wall here, so it would be a little hard to do anything fancier. Knight's drawing in somewhat, which is fine, seeing as uh, we're just about done on this. Just decoration after we've uh, placed this last stack in. Again, this one's a, a very confined space, so you have to keep it simple. You could just rug glitch them in, but the clipping would be a bit unsubtle, to say the least. So and there we go, a nice little sack. So let's have a look around the finished structure. Relatively simple, but it does the job. I would have liked it to be a little less square, but uh, as soon as we are starting with a square base and working out from there, is what it is. The other thing with that would be making it any larger would mean there's less space to build around it as well. But there we go. Let's take a look inside. So obviously the power generator is still in here as well. And hopefully it'll be the only one I need for the castle. So otherwise I'm going to have a hard time making it look right. <laughs> but there we go. So got the radio around the front. If we come around the side here, a little alleyway to get round to the back where the maintenance section is. A couple of uh, blueprints on the wall there. A few tools and bits and pieces to maintain the radio and the generator. And I've used the wire glitch there to run a wire from the radio there up to a conduit that I've attached sort of halfway up the tower. Or a little further up the tower anyway. But it had to be wire glitch because for some reason the game doesn't see the gap in the roof there as uh, being a gap. It treats it as if it's a solid object. So I'll head around and take a look upstairs. A very, very cramped little space, but I like it. It's kind of fitting for the wasteland. <laughs> Can't imagine expansive spaces would be the order of the day, really. There we go. Apologies if I sound a little bunged up, by the way. Just getting over the end of a cold at the moment. 
typically timed just to coincide with the start of my time off work, which is absolutely fantastic. Speaking of, with having all this time off work, I'm streaming a lot at the moment, so if you want to check out a bit of Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Fallout 76 just around the corner, I'll be streaming plenty of that as well, so head on over to, uh, you know, either watch it here in fact, or head over to Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Games, and catch up with the stream there as well if you like. There's that uh, conduit I was mentioning before. We'll head down and make our way out. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, do hit all those buttons for me. And make sure you've got the bell on so that you can uh, get notified when I upload. For now, thank you very much. And I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon.